there are four different signals that regulate mTOR. Uh, we've mentioned leucine. We also mentioned insulin. An enzyme, uh, a factor known as AMP kinase, which is carbohydrate sense, is energy sensitive. And then another molecule known as RED1, which is stress sensitive, uh, particularly resistance exercise. So there are four different things the, the individual balances. When you're young and growing, insulin and IGF-1 dominates that. And insulin, first and foremost, is a growth hormone. And when you stop growing at 25, it ceases to have an effect on protein synthesis and muscle. And so now the shift, the whole thing shifts to protein quality. Protein quality is not nearly as important when the system's dominated by hormones. And so now what we know is as we get older, we can buffer that loss of the hormones by higher quality protein, mostly leucine, and resistance exercise. Those two factors will balance out the growth issue that young people have, the benefit of the growth part. The, the, the issue with protein is being an absolute number, if your calories go down, say you're now a 75-year-old woman and your calories per day is now uh, 1,200 calories, you still have a 100 gram per day protein requirement. Uh, if people are doing weight loss, it's an absolute number. So people should never talk about percentage of calories. You have to think about protein first. From my research, one of the things that we believe is that the most critical meal of the day is the first meal of the day. When you have had an overnight fast, mm -hmm. your protein synthesis is down and that mTOR signal molecule is down-regulated, it's inhibited. And until you have enough leucine, around three grams, which translates to about 30 grams of protein, for most people, until you have a, a meal that has 30 or more grams of protein, your muscle stays catabolic. So you're continually breaking down protein. We think that's a significant aspect of aging that people have lower and lower protein, they don't eat protein at breakfast, and that and we know the efficiency is going down in the first place, so we want to front load protein in the day. So we want at least two meals that are well above 30 grams of protein. So I always have people shooting for 40, 45 at the first meal, another 45, 45 at their last meal, Let's say an elderly woman trying to maintain minimal muscle, I'll concentrate on those two meals. If I'm talking with somebody who's trying to do weight loss, I'll concentrate on three because I don't want them getting hungry. If I'm talking with someone who's trying to be hypertrophy, a muscle builder, I'll concentrate on four. So how many meals per day do I make anabolic and muscle? And by anabolic, I'm thinking 35 grams or more. And the data that we know for absolute certain is the first and last meal are absolutely important. The middle meal, I'd be hard pressed to tell, show you a single study that where anybody's ever show, looked at lunch. Annotated and summarized, easy to share with loved ones. The description below the title for this video has these summary points.